How is up, y'all? It's Poppy and Crackin'. It's D-Bus. We react to this vid by Naomi Cannibal. It's titled, Bullying Works, but is it working too well? Oh. Okay, look, let's see what she's talking about in this vid. Let's watch. Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I want to break down this phrase, bullying works. I feel like we hear it a lot on social media, especially in the pop culture spaces. So I want to kind of break really? down what that means, give some examples of it, and then complicate the question. I'm not Should we always change things? Should artists always change oh, things just yeah. because of backlash when a lot of it is indeed pretty subjective? So let's go ahead and get into it. Let me be clear, I'm not talking about cases when people rally together yeah, online right. to hold someone accountable for doing harm to someone. A company for example. I feel like I usually see people say bring back bullying, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone say bullying works. This is the first time. Exploiting people, nothing like that. When people use the phrase bullying works, they're usually not talking about actual bullying or harassment, nor are they typically talking about affecting change on some serious social issue. But more so when people online come together to be critical of a piece of media that later gets changed. So you hear it a lot in the pop culture space. Oh. And of course, like I usually have to say, this is not new. People were writing in, phoning in, attending advanced screenings and focus groups well before social media existed. It's just that with social media, that feedback can be instant and often higher volume. And because of that, a lot of dogs have to a lot of then. <laughs> and artists, studios, companies often try to doing? change whatever people are criticizing. Lest those jilted fans not support their work, which of course will cost them money. A pretty big example of this I remember was a few years ago when Paramount dropped the trailer for the live action Sonic movie. It was kind of giving a rat, not necessarily Hedgehog in my opinion. And maybe that's because with a lot of these 3D animated films, they still want there to be an element of realism, so to speak. I don't know what the fuck a Hedgehog the looks like. Often purely fictional. The general consensus was that that that's OG that animated that's Sonic that's was a no-go. In a surprising turn of events, Paramount did push the I feel like they kind of like a porcupine. Watch her team quite literally went back to the they do. Oh, they're to ugly. more accurate, smaller teethed version of Sonic. I remember when this yeah, went I've down seen and seeing that they were actually going to change the Sonic design. Like My first thought was, damn, they actually changed it. Good for them for they're listening. Hideous. Even if they likely did so so that the movie went tank. Even on the new So, trailer, honestly, a real hedgehog <laughs> does low-key look like the the first one. They do got like a rat-like face, but of course people want, you know, Sonic to look more like the, the video game. The one with the redesigned Sonic, there were comments expressed in disbelief that Paramount actually listened to the backlash, same way I felt. One that really hits at the crux of this video Yeah, he looks reads, more like the real I Sonic. I still can't believe the... you bullied an entire studio to change the design of Sonic. Good job, everyone. I'm sure we'll never know how much the Sonic redesign saved them, despite how much it probably costs. But I remember this instance being used as proof that at least sometimes you should listen to your fans' feedback, or at least the feedback of people you're expecting to spend their money on whatever you're about to put Why out. Disney? On the music side of things, I've seen this happen a couple times with album covers. One of the most infamous examples is probably the original cover of yours truly, Ariana Grande's debut album. I found out about this years basic. after the fact, and I remember when someone tweeted their original cover, I thought it was a cover they made as a joke saying the original cover was basically this bad. But no, that was the actual cover. It does seem like the cover was changed directly because of the backlash, as Ariana said last year. Mother, what made you change the cover from this to the released one? Well, it's horrible. It's not horrible. It's, um, it is, you were right. You guys got very angry when you saw it. I was very sad Anger about crazy. that, and I changed it. You were right, but you're not always right. Your bullying has been consistent for the past 10 years. Back in 2013, though, when Ariana changed the cover, she made it seem like that original yours truly cover was never the real one tweeting. All right, I'm done messing with you all, although I have to admit it was pretty fun. Those other photos are all part of the album packaging. Conceptually, I don't think the cover's that bad, but I can definitely see how people weren't rocking with the execution. The Photoshop is poor, and Ariana is kind of just copied and pasted into a Canva clip art flower bed. And there's also no dimension on the cover, not What's really the in the shadows, and your eye isn't guided anywhere. Let me see so you look at Ariana because she's in the center and you know it's her album, but nothing is really guiding you there. The album title and Ariana's name are too close to one another and are in the same size and font, to the point where you might just think the entire album is titled Yours Truly Ariana Grande, rather than just Yours Truly. And other than that, I found some comments expressing they didn't necessarily like the juxtaposition of the flowers and the sweet imagery with lingerie, so they didn't like how it was kind of childish and meant to be a doll at the same time. Mm. Comparing the original cover to the official cover, the faded spotlight yeah. directs your eye to Ariana. Yeah, this is clearly a real photo, not just different layers of Photoshop, and you can differentiate her name from the album title. It's definitely more muted and toned down, but I think it's better executed than the previous cover. 
Maybe it's a case like Sonic where people wouldn't have listened to the album if they hated the cover, and again, maybe That's it's true. not. Because I feel like music is a little different where you may still check it out because you know a little of the artist's stuff and you already like them. But this being a debut album, maybe the cover being subpar would have hindered Ariana from gaining mm. a larger fan base. Maybe people would have walked away from that album if they saw it in stores, but I guess we'll never know. I genuinely couldn't tell if the same or similar thing happened with Eternal Sunshine. Because of the cover used for Yes And, I believe that was called, or at least thought to be, the original album cover at one point, and that one just that seems to be the it? cover for that one single. A little over a month after that is when we got the next set of alternative covers. And when that first cover came out with Yes And, a lot of fans quite literally were like, Yes And, and were asking for a different cover. And I actually found a post saying it was unlikely Ariana would change the album cover from that original blurry face shot because she was done being swayed by fans, I believe before the other covers came out. And then when the Ponytail one came out, which at least on Spotify now seems like the official album cover for Eternal Sunshine, some other fans didn't like that cover and they said they wanted Ariana to stop listening to fans and stop changing things and people said they didn't like the original things she put out. Just weeks ago, I found out the same thing happened with Fifth Harmony's debut album, Reflection. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't think this original cover is that bad. It is a tad boring, but had this been the official cover, I don't think I would have thought twice about it. It wouldn't have screamed at me from the shelves, which admitted it might be a problem, but I wouldn't have thought to call it ugly either. Maybe the only thing I don't like is what the shelves? Being so far away from the girls that you can't really see. Who their goes faces. in the store and buys Again, music? this cover was changed due to fan backlash, <laughs> with the group releasing a new cover just a week later. Even if I don't hate the first cover, I do obviously agree that this one is better. Though it I keeps mean, the same color scheme, it doesn't have the reflection ones. He's like, neither is that good. Very clearly, rather than mostly seeing negative space. They're all dressed more similarly, still wearing different tops though, rather than simply being color coordinated, which this is still pretty uniform for Fit Harmony. Based on Allie's tweet with the new cover, it seems like maybe the group wasn't fond of the original either, since she said they agreed with the fans. The cover changed one of the girls' points with their fans, many of whom expressed gratitude the group actually listened to them. So maybe unlike with yours truly, it was a win-win or fifth But who cares about the album cover? That don't change the music. After the fans were clear, they also did not like it. Now this one I cannot prove, but I have seen chatter about it. And I do have a sneaking suspicion this may have also happened with Dua's Radical Optimism cover. A lot of people weren't fans of it. Some didn't necessarily hate the picture, but were confused about how the image fit with the album, since I think only Houdini and Training Season were out at this point. The album cover was actually included in a viral tweet about how album cover art is dying now or something like that, which sparked a firestorm on pop Twitter. A few weeks later, Dua dropped an alternative cover for Radical Optimism, which seems to come from a photo shoot she did early on in that era because these pictures came out with Houdini and then some of the video footage was used for the lyric video for these walls. There's text on this alternative cover also, and it's the same font that was used for the two singles out at that point. Though neither Dua nor her team responded, a lot of people have speculated that based on the timeline, the new album cover was released to give fans some sort of visual unity after being thrown off by the first cover. The fact that y'all think that it's just the artist is also weird. Like, they're, they have a whole ass label, a whole team who, you know, they, they're money motivated. So, they're also seeing that people are complaining and they're feeling like, mm, this might affect how many sales the album gets. Let's go in this direction. Let's... Let's change this. Of course, you know, especially the bigger artists, I'm sure they have some type of say so, um, but they're not putting these fucking album covers together. <laughs> so they're kind of just going with it, I feel like, some of the time. It's not like they're literally on Photoshop putting the shit together. Responses were already divided on the initial radical optimism cover. Like some of them might not have no say at all, to be honest. This alternative cover confused some people even further. Some were adamant this cover fit the album more based on the singles that were released at the time, while others just admitted blatant confusion over the era's aesthetics. And some people in general just express exhaustion over the fact that now so many albums have multiple <sighs> covers me. and variants. And herein lies the question. It's a tricky balance to strike giving your fans what they want so that they remain fans, but at what point should an artist kind of stop listening to their fans or at least all of their fans? And it's really unlikely that there's a one-size-fits-all answer. I think in a case like with yours truly, where it seemed like there were technical errors in the cover, it made sense to change it. But in my opinion, with radical optimism, it looked kind of like a second guess or course correct, because while some people may not have liked their original cover, I personally don't think it was bad in terms of execution. I actually like the cover, but I do have to kind of agree with people who say it didn't really make sense for the visuals that we had seen of the era so far, so I do understand the confusion about it. 
Like with the different rollout, different visuals for the preceding singles, this cover would have been fine, at least in my opinion. Or dropping a second cover and that having been the only cover probably also would have been fine. But I'm sure some people also disagree because you can't please everyone. But that's kind of the point that's being made. When you show that you will change things based on what fans say and pretty quickly yeah, at that, been like, I like the first one better. that you can be so-called bullied into changing, which I'm sure could go on to bite you in the butt if you don't change when they want you to later. And what's interesting about all these album cover situations is that they seem to be brought on by social media. The artists all the fans were saying probably were like, oh crap, hope this doesn't mean they won't buy the album. And then they or their team changed it or released an additional one. Coincidentally, Dua Lipa is also an example of someone who got quote unquote bullied into improving her stage presence after comments about it went viral. Some of it for sure was bullying or just straight up hateful comments, yeah, but a lot of it was also genuine criticism. The same thing happened with Summer Walker, who last year went to Tiana Taylor to get some help with her stage presence. I would say oh. less so than the album cover example, stage presence can be Tiana subjective, her. but it's kind of easy to tell when a performance is low energy. And seeing a performance live definitely costs more than an album. Like, I'll stream an album even if I hate the cover, but I'm not going to buy a ticket to see an artist if I see clips of them giving multiple low-energy performance. That is big facts. Big facts. I'm not going to your fucking show if I see that you don't know how to put on a show because I'm there for a show. I could listen to your damn album at home. <laughs> I wish I would have saw clips of Part Next Door, you know, his terrible performance. I don't know if he's gotten better over the years, but around the time when he first came out, child, child, his, <laughs> his shows were terrible. I went to two, and I'm just like, oh, my God, this is so bad. Like, bro, I could do a better job than this. It was so bad. But, I mean, he was a newer artist at the time, so whatever. But... <laughs> Yeah, now from now on, okay, I don't listen. I need to see some clips. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I need to see some clips of your performance. I don't remember how I found out about this. Maybe on TikTok, maybe on YouTube. I don't remember. But there's this idol, his name is Bohan, and I believe he was a trainee yeah. first, but he was ready to make his solo debut. And so he released a self funded song and oh, performance video you. on his birthday at that, and it was kind of rough. Are y'all watching? The music sound trash. Which we so, but the vocals and the mixing definitely could have been better. Oh, okay. Like with a bigger budget, even without any singing lessons, I'm sure there are companies out there who could have polished this up and released it. And as you can imagine, Beaumont was ripped to shreds in the comments and again on his birthday. While some Damn. people were unnecessarily mean, a lot of people were providing constructive criticism, like notes in the vocals and the engineering and whatnot. Others are pointing out on the visuals. well, like the choreo, or pointing out how hard it is to even release a so-called bad music video, especially if you're funding it yourself. And probably Bohan's worst birthday ever, but the criticism and honestly attacks to an extent got so bad he released a notes app apology and unannounced Aww. his debut. Also, funniest thing ever, he actually released an on-mute version of the song after dozens of comments sarcastically begging for it. I do feel bad for him. Like, maybe he needs some vocal lessons, but people dragging him through the mud was kind of unnecessary, though that's what we can expect online now, sadly. But still, he handled this way better than I would have in his position. Like, on-mute version is hilarious. In the description of that video, he wrote, Sorry, I will work harder on my next release. And that was four months ago, and honestly, because of this fiasco and his response, I'm kind of eager to see what he comes out with next. Sometimes it's not the vocals on the song that get people requesting. He's fucking up this choreography. Though. <laughs> it can be the lack of some okay. vocals, maybe even some of the lyrics. One thing the K-pop boys gonna do is dance. Two when Taylor Swift put out "Snow on the Beach" with Lana Del Rey, fans of I think both artists, but Lana's fans especially, I would assume, wanted more of Lana's vocals on the track. Some even doubted that Lana was on the song. To me, it sounds like she's basically doing backing vocals throughout the whole song. Like those very echoey sounding vocals are her. She's prominent at the end of each chorus. But mostly she's singing with Taylor, it sounds like. But I think if you're unfamiliar with Lana's voice, I do agree that it's hard to catch her on the song. So on the Till Dawn version of Midnight's, there was another version of the song added called Snow on the Beach featuring more Lana Del Rey. Taylor tweeted, You asked for it, we listened, Lana and I went back into the studio specifically to record more Lana on Snow on the Beach. Love you, Lana. In the more Lana version, it sounds like they turn up Lana's vocals even more, that way you can hear her better, and she gets to take the lead on the second verse, which was originally led by Taylor. Reactions to this version seem positive, saying it was good Taylor listened to her fans, some of Lana's fans saying this version was closer to how they'd imagined the collaboration. This one I didn't even know about, but stumbled across. Apparently Taylor also removed the Hey Kids spelling is fun from her song Me. 
while a lot of people were too fond of their original song, that part specifically, a lot of people didn't like this it because mess. they found it corny or cringy. And as some people put it, the line got bullied out of existence. Last year, I did a video on cringe, and to prepare for the video, I asked y'all what some of the cringiest songs in existence were, at least in your opinion. And I actually think the song that people named the most was me. And in the comments, a lot of people have written, hey kids, spelling is fun, obviously referencing that song. Mm -hmm. It's definitely corny. I'm not going to act like it's not, but I feel like that line fit the sort of unabashedly cheesy charm the song has. And removing it because people found it corny, which they were supposed to, goes back on the point of the song a little, in my opinion. And yeah, apparently I'm late on this because the articles on this are back from 2019, which is only a couple months after me was released. Even outside of a movie or music career, any artistic money-making endeavor, I feel like this has kind of trickled down to how we non-famous people talk to one another. I feel like this bullying works mentality, often exacerbated by the safety of being behind a phone or a computer screen, kind of makes people more comfortable giving unasked for feedback on people's looks, for example, because that's where I see it a lot. There will be a video about whatever topic and then you'll open the comments and see dozens of people repeating the same so-called advice to that person, telling them to try a different hairstyle, a fashion choice, different eyebrows, or even go get a procedure done. So I'm just gonna say it, I kind of hate the color analysis trend. Um, I don't think this person meant this to be unkind or disparaging, so there's no need to defend me, but I got a few comments like this in Wait, the what did they say? I don't intend to be rude, but you should get your colors done. I think you look really great in some deeper colors. That provide contrast to your fair complexion. Or disparaging, so there's no need to defend me. But I got a few comments like this in the last few months, and it always evokes a very defensive reaction within me, and I want to explain why. Oh, I think it's true that certain colors will look better or worse on a person, but I don't think the range of colors is as narrow as a seasonal color suggests, and I think it discourages creativity and fun with color. I also think that the science is based on a very specific idea of what flattering looks like. Maybe you could argue with music, a movie, something like that. The person commenting, giving their criticism has some skin in the game because they're going to spend their time or money on the thing, so they want it to be worth it. But how someone does their makeup, whether they get curtain bangs, there's absolutely no stake in it. And I would think a lot of people don't even really have an opinion on that person's looks. They don't necessarily care whether you change, yeah, some but will revel right. in the fact that they and a bunch of other strangers have the power to make you change something. As always, do be sure to let me know your thoughts. I mean, the examples she showed, which were mainly about like album covers and stuff like that, I don't feel like that was bullying, <laughs> them saying that they didn't like it. When I think of bullying, I think of people attacking someone's character, their appearance, you know, and it's usually unnecessary. This is just criticism. I mean, some people are a bit harsh with their criticism, of course, but yeah, they're just giving their feedback and it, it makes sense for their team to listen because they are the ones who are buying it. So if they're just like, mm, I don't like this and here's why, then it makes sense to use that feedback to come with a better product. So that's not bullying at all, but people bully people's looks for sure. That's unnecessary. And I would consider that more so bullying. You attack you know, someone personally, but this is like, yeah, <laughs> their art that they're going to be buying. So I think that's very different. But anyway, y'all let me know what y'all think though. Let me know what other videos you've been watching. I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.